Welcome, my name is Veronica and in this video series I would like to give you an introduction to Affinity Designer, a software that I'm using daily for my professional work as a children's book illustrator and pattern designer. This video mini-series is designed specifically for those of you who are completely new to Affinity Designer. In this video we are taking a closer look at the document interface in Affinity Designer because this is where all your creative magic happens. So I will walk you through the key elements of the interface so that you feel right at home navigating your workspace and uh, making sure that you know where everything is. Let's jump in together. All right, before I start showing you the document interface, let's remove the layers that we just created. You can either just have the layer that you want to remove selected and over here or over here, there's a bin symbol that you can hit if you would like to delete it. So let's first uh, delete this pixel layer and now this uh, vector layer. Sometimes if I'm uh, if I have my hand at hand, so to say, from here, like when working on my sofa, for example, sometimes it's easier for me just to take my finger and to use the icon here, the delete icon. All right, so in the previous lesson, we could see that switching the, between the personas is very, very easy. When you switch to a different persona, a unique workspace layout containing the tools and the panels uh, used by the persona is loaded. So the menus on the left, they provide access to personas and uh, to their right is the context toolbar. This context uh, toolbar is uh, meant for quick access to important settings for uh, the current tool or the current selection that you're using. Now here at the far right, we have menus for zoom level, design aids, preview mode and snapping options. In case of doubt, if you hit this little uh, question mark symbol here in the bottom right corner, you will get a bit of a cheat sheet showing you what the buttons and uh, the tools are called. Here to the right, we have special panels. Panels contain even more settings that can be accessed by tapping their icons on the right. For example, here we have the color studio for uh, selecting and managing our colors. Right underneath, we have the Stroke Studio. We already know the Layers panel. This is the Brushes panel. Here we have Appearances, which I very rarely use. The Symbols panel, which I use all the time when I am creating my repeat patterns. This is where I create my automated templates for pattern design. Layer Effects for Special Effects. The Adjustment uh, panel. Here you can change things such as uh, brightness and contrast or exposure. Next, we have the text uh, panel. Here we have the assets panel or the asset studio. Have a whole class about uh, vector assets. But assets don't only have to be vector. They can also be uh, raster shapes. You can save them into the assets panel as well. Next, we have the uh, stock panel. Here you can look for stock photos. In Affinity Designer, we have access to Pexels and to Pixabay. And then you can even, whatever you search for, you can drag and drop those photos and use them either in your design or you can use them as reference photos. For example, from Pexels here, there's a, a search area. If I type in, for example, fox, looking for reference photos for a fox, they will start to show up and then you can uh, use it in your design. Next is the resource manager, which I'm not using at all. Just wanted to mention that it's there. Then we have the transform studio, which is really, really handy, especially when you're creating patterns, for example, with more of a semi-manual uh, technique with the live preview tool. But it also gives you here some handy order, uh, transform functions, flip and rotate or alignment options. Then we have a navigator uh, menu. A history panel, you can also go back. For example, we can go back to our shapes or back to the previous action. And over here, we also have the undo, redo button, but I very, very rarely use it. I think it's actually safe to say that I never use it. So if I were to again draw a shape, so now we're also in the history panel, 
I can use the very same gesture that you can use for Fresco or for, for Procreate. Tap two fingers on the screen one time. You just go back. And then if you want to go back, then three fingers tap. And your shape is retrieved. But let's remove it. And now let's leave this document for a second and head to settings. So to go to settings, we have to exit the document here in the upper left corner. And in this uh, lower left corner, we have settings. In the general settings, for example, because we were exploring this undo, redo button and gesture, this is where you can also set your undo limit. Your history panel will only show you as many actions as you set up in here. So if you would like to spare a little bit the internal memory uh, of your uh, software, if you don't want it to lag a little bit too much on your iPad, you can reduce uh, this limit here and then theoretically uh, the software should be running more smooth. Now under user interface, you can also change the background gray level. What do I mean? Let's go back to this document. This gray around your canvas, people have different preferences. Some people want it completely white. Uh, some people want it light gray, whereas other people want it a little bit darker. So in order to change that, you have to go to settings, user interface, and this is where you can adjust your background gray level. For me personally, the sweet spot is at about 75, 76%. If you are left-handed, by the way, you can switch to the left-handed mode over here. Under the color settings, you can also set up your default color profiles. Under tools, the one thing that I toggled on, for example, is allow canvas rotation in all tools. This is where I can, so um, let's maybe do it the other way around. If I disable it, this allow canvas rotation in all tools, then I click done, go back to my document, then I cannot, you see what I mean, I cannot rotate it. And coming from Procreate, <laughs> this was rather important to me. So again, settings, tools, if you would like to be able to rotate your canvas, make sure to have it on. Okay, now it's working. Under pencil, you can make some extra adjustments to your Apple Pencil if you need to. Fonts is really important to me. There are some fonts that you can find in Affinity Designer, but all those fonts that you see in this list, I needed to upload them manually. And if you want to upload a new font, you hit the plus uh, sign and then you have to find it in your cloud storage or internal storage. And you can then add it onto this list and then you will be able to use it in Affinity Designer. Shortcuts, I'm not really using or paying attention to it. The same linked services, I don't have it linked with Dropbox. And this is to reset everything. I'm not gonna go there. Uh, this is in case you wanted to go back and basically start your settings from zero. This document is still untitled. If you wanted to close it without saving it, you know that you can just select this X button and it will be closed for you and gone forever. <laughs> Over here, you can also see the dimensions and the color profile of your document. And when you go to those three horizontal lines, the hamburger menu, you have the option to save it, save it as, or to rename it. Let's rename it, for example, to, to, to maybe test document. Not very original, but it will do for the time being. So now it is only renamed. And this little M letter tells us that it's not saved yet. So we still have to go to the hamburger menu and save it as. Once it is saved this first time and you want to save it uh, again because you've done some additional work uh, in your document, you can just select save. But I will go ahead and for the first time I will hit save as because I want to double check if I'm really happy with my file name. Because if you rename it and then you again save it with a, another name to your storage, it will create a copy just with a different name. So it's important to choose the right name and not to create any duplicates by sticking to this one name and to this one document. And then you hit save. I could go to this general Affinity Designer folder that I created in my iPad storage and I can just, for now, just save it anywhere here. Okay, now that you completed our mini series, I hope that you're feeling more confident with uh, 
finding yourself around uh, in Affinity Designer. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because very soon I will be uploading brand new draw with me step-by-step -step tutorials where we will create some really awesome art together in Affinity Designer. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and if you're a beginner to Affinity Designer, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this mini series. So you can click on the playlist to continue learning and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos and beginners tutorials. Happy learning!